We're here with Dr. Brian Arnell talking the cost of applications this summer. Now, Brian, what do you have for us? So, so really this isn't the place I want to be as far as predicting things, but I want to get a little Kim Anderson on us as far as the futures and what it's looking like. Everybody that's been fertilizing in the last several months knows the cost of fertilizer has gone up. And, and everybody's hoped for that price to decline, especially as we get closer to the planning for winter wheat production and even moving on out further into our 2022 crop. Uh, effectively, what we're looking at here is the supply and demand, and the big part of the demand is going to keep going back to the corn price. So as long as corn remains high or remains at a good value, uh, w there's not much expectation to see the price of nitrogen specifically start coming down. Uh, everybody expects that fertilizers are priced in P and K to maintain at the levels it's at right now. So what advice do you have for producers who are maybe working on a tight budget? Uh, what kind of applications or what advice do you have? The cost of fertilizer doesn't diminish its impact and value to the crop. So we still need nutrients to produce maximum yield. Uh, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, but we can manage those much more efficiently than we are if we utilize technologies such as soil testing, uh, the benchmark of where we need to be at. If our soil pH is off balance, that's going to lead to inefficiencies in our other nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. So it all goes back to that soil test. If we can afford it, if we have that value, go into zone sampling, go into grid sampling. Let's be a little bit more spatially, meaning we take more samples than one per field. And getting a better idea because the nutrients vary. So getting a variable rate nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium recommendation is of, of big importance. Now, just to play devil's advocate, let's say worst case scenario, a producer just can't get their hands on some nitrogen this year. What kind of advice uh, during the in season do you have for them? So, so really it'd be that movement to end season, really moving towards the price of anhydrous while it'll be a much cheaper product per pound of nitrogen. It's going to take more to get to the end product. So if we're still trying to get high quality grain, high quality proteins, we need to move and shift in season. And so the in season management allows us to get a better idea of what kind of environment we've had. So what kind of yield potential shifting from anhydrous to UAN, which means we need to be looking at pre-buying UAN even taking delivery, looking at on-site storage, so getting poly tanks to store UAN that you pre-deliver before the end of the year, so you have it for in-season top dressing. Of course, the nitrogen-rich strip, and even in this case, I would go to other fertility-rich strips. We've been doing a lot of work in wheat, and there's opportunity for recovery uh, with phosphorus, nitrogen, and potassium if we do some strips and know we need it. So a lot of this is kind of playing it by the ear uh, not getting all of our eggs into a single basket. Now we're talking about uh, things for the future, but winter wheat really isn't that far away. What kind of timeline should producers be have in mind? Last week is one of the best answers I can give you is that as we're moving forward to enter winter wheat, we need to be taking those soil samples as soon as possible, uh, primarily for ag lime, because lime is going to take some time to get incorporated and get worked in, but we need to be able to make plans. So that means getting those soil samples collected as soon as possible so they can get analyzed. And we have an idea of where we stand and what inputs might be needed in the future. And producers can always go to their extension office to uh, for some helpful advice and tips. Absolutely, go to that county office, talk to them about soil sampling, soil testing. They have access to soil probes. They have access to green seeker sensors and even push spreaders. So we can make sure that you have everything you need to go into the 2021, 2022 winter wheat crop and be as successful and, and economically viable as possible. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Brian Arnell, Precision Nutrient Management Specialist here at Oklahoma State University.